Hi folks, welcome back to another battle report, and it's a continuation of the several battle reports we've done previously uh, for the couple of skirmish games and the baggage game. So in this it's good versus evil, on the good side we have the Empire and the Lizardmen, and they're teaming up against the Chaos and the Undead. Uh, we'll have a look at their armies in a sec. The advantage the player's got is the uh, good guys actually managed to retain 200 extra points without getting the two baggage um, markers in the last scenario and they won the siege which means we also get to set up a watchtower in our deployment zone and on the evil side uh, they got to pick table edge and who goes first and second and they also caught, captured one of the baggage uh, markers in the last scenario in which case they had a hundred points which I think the chaos took so on the chaos side we have uh, two units of chaos warriors um, with four commands and the mark of zinch and in amongst them they have a exalted hero I believe and a wizard and on the other side you have the chaos knights which are chosen with no marks while on the undead side again there's um, stand-ins here so uh, apologize basically anything with a spear is a skeleton while these um, night goblins with bows are Zombies and the two trolls are actually uh, ghost bases. Uh, this is hopefully the last time he's uh, using stand-ins. He's brought some models now. He just has to start painting them. Um, just as mentioned on the far side, you can see there is some chaos hounds there as well. So on the left-hand side, you have uh, 15 zombies. Behind that is their necromancer and that is their leader. You then have the two ghost bases, uh, another unit of zombies, and the skeletons are a unit of graveguard, full command, and it also has a vampire thrall blood dragon in amongst them. And this is on our side, and also you can see here there is a banshee as well. I knew there was something else. Um, so here I've got my skinks with uh, blowpipes, uh, well, bow slash blowpipes, and um, you know, croc scores. In the tower at the top, we have a Empire Great Cannon beside the tower you can just see the red there of a fire wizard uh, who had fireball and a wall of fire we then have a detachment of 10 handgunners and then we have 20 halberdiers with shields with a warrior priest with additional hand weapon uh, beyond that you've got the saurus warriors and the salamander and on the other flank we have going from that salamander again um, another unit of 10 handgunners 20 swordsmen with their captain in who's just got a heavy armor pistol and i think that's about it i've got another unit of soros with my hero in it who has got the sword of my shield gleaming pendant and then a hellblast volley gun and a couple more skinks and behind skinks is my wizard and my wizard got oh i think portents of fire and second son of amuel so there's like really no offense on my wizard which is really annoying Okay, so uh, in the opponent's movement phase, they move up a little bit. You see the Banshee is on the pyramid there, moving around. Um, yeah, on this side, uh, they managed to beef up both... Oh, no, do the one unit of zombies and raise a unit of skeletons. Um, problem is here, he's got what, three wizards at uh, level two. So that's six power dice, two for the basic. And they also have um, two marks of zinc, which gives them two more power dice. So that's what, six, a, a ten power dice... And we have two level twos uh, for our four power dice. So whatever was happening, things were getting through. Um, we both had a spell scroll, but we're just going to hold that for that last minute thing um, where we really needed it. Um, just to mention that we have got a unit of uh, huntsmen, uh, which were scouts, which is hidden but behind that um, scenery there and behind the woodland just to slow down the chaos army gives another round of shooting as you can see in the magic phase they also managed to blast up a hell blaster yeah they managed to get five hits three hit the crew and then wounded all the crew uh we lost a hell blaster in the first round of magic but other than that things are as you can see uh, they're moving forwards we're staying defensively and ready to release the best hail of shot we can so in our turn, we didn't move a hell of a lot because uh, we want to get as much shooting on as we can. At the top there, I kept the croc sword back because the banshee was there. And with leadership 7, the banshee can do some serious damage to my croc. Um, so I'm just going to hope we can fireball it. But at the end of all our shooting and our magic, um, we did uh, nothing. Um, precisely nothing. I don't think we might have like, killed one Chaos Warrior and a couple of skellies and that was about it. Um, so not really as epic as we were hoping. So back to the opponent's phase, and as you see, the undead player has moved up here and has added yet more to his skeleton horde and um, just moved everyone up. Uh, we kind of thought this as a bit of a chance here. Um, problem is, even with our warrior priest, uh, that's one thing we did forget. Warrior priest uh, does also give us a dispel dice. Uh, I don't think we remembered that till about uh, round four. 
Uh, it might have been round three. Um, so we should have an extra dispel dice, which we forgot about. So that does put us at five to their ten casting dice. But anyway, our warrior priest, we, as we saw this, uh, there's a good chance our warrior priest, if we can get the spell off, can burn his way through, soul fire his way through those um, spirit host trolls. Um, with that, he could probably break through, get into those dogs behind, and then behind, be behind the undead lines, which would be absolutely fantastic. So with that hope there, um, that was our goal. But as you can see, the players just moved up, and it was our, we just had to shoot as much off as we can and try and reduce the skelly unit. Uh, <laughs> problem is, the skelly unit, every time you uh, raise a new unit, you work out its initial strength, and you work out its victory points from it. So I think if he raised, I think, what, nine skeletons or so in the first one, um, or ten points odd each, so you, you get 90 points. But you can then raise that beyond whatever you like. So these skelly uh, bones were getting a, to be getting quite a big unit and a bit of a problem for our handgunners. On the other side, the Chaos just advanced up where they could. They're being slowed at the moment, thankfully, uh, thanks to those uh, archers there, which they can't do anything with unless they bring a hero out get that 360 art uh, I just made a, a big error here as you can see my Lisbon hero has now moved off um, with the oh, you, ethereal unit at the other side I thought his magic weapon cut through there because that's gonna be our, our strongest attack is we can wipe out the undead all we have to do is hold on this side wipe out the undead and then swing around to sort out the chaos in the meantime we've got plenty of shooting here they can just do a damage ping off what we can fall back where we don't need to and just concentrate our forces on the uh, the undead. But what ends up happening is my <laughs> my hero takes forever to get across to the other side, and uh, doesn't really do much in the battle. Where at least if he was on this side, he could have got stuck into the fight that is eventually coming. So during the magic phase, they managed to get up curse of years on my saurus and i thought you know it only does wounds on sixes i'll let it through the first round we'll stop it in our magic phase because we ain't doing anything else in our magic phase uh they seem to have the dispel dice enough to do it plus we can't actually seem to roll anything and <laughs> so i let it through and out of what 15 saurus i lose six <laughs> six sixes out of 15 so that was quite painful um yeah there you go. Uh, don't underestimate spells. Uh, spells, and we just kept that dice there just to remind us. Oh, on the, ne the next magic phase, it'll be a five to wound it. And at the end of their movement, this is how they're looking. Um, as I say, we've done pretty well with what um, uh, what they're doing to attack us with the spells and stuff. But yeah, it's relentless, and we haven't done much damage to them. So hopefully, in the next round, our shooting should be on par, and we can actually cause some damage on these guys. So over here our plan starts to take form, uh, we move around and charge into the ghosts uh, with the warrior priest in that. Um, the shooting, we did a grape shot with the cannon, which uh, combined with the shooting from the musketeers there, blasted the skeletons, uh, so we're not so fearful of them. And hopefully in the combat we can push through. Elsewhere we just held, uh, ready to let's say, just take on the hits we can from the chaos and try our best to wipe out the undead as quick as possible. So back over to the opponent's turn. In our turn, the halberdiers that went in with the warrior priest, he can get his spell off to damage the um, uh, the ghosts. And just with combat res and everything else, and they didn't do any damage back, they didn't actually manage to kill them. They had one wound away from killing all the spirit hosts, which was a damn shame. If we had a magic weapon, that would have been ideal. But there you go. On the left-hand side, the skeletons charged the handgunners. Um, we've shot them up pretty well. The handgunners outnumber them, and I'm pretty sure the handgunners should be able to beat them with the help of combat res. Uh, other than that, you can just see how everyone has moved up uh, around, as you see. Oh, God damn, the Banshee actually managed to get through and caused seven wounds. Um, <laughs> yeah, double six. Seven wounds on my Croc scores, um, who actually fail their car check and end up fleeing. Um, and everything else is, as you can see. So in the enemy combat phase, we managed to finish off the um, Spirit Host, mainly down to combat res because nothing else could hurt it. Um, so next turn we'll just have to charge the zombies and try and clear them out. In the background there, my uh, very damaged Saurus, who took another curse of years, but only lost, I think, one or two models, even though they were wounding on fives, were also charged by the Grave Guard, who were magically charged using Dance Macabre. Um, so yeah, that's pretty brutal, but we, you know, we needed to stop it. Uh, we didn't want him to restore wounds elsewhere. 
um, especially on the skeletons which he was desperately trying to raise up. So yeah, the Grave Guard pretty much hammered their way through there. Uh, <laughs> not much I could do with my swords against the Blood Dragon Vampire Thrall, I'm afraid. So on the other side of the field, my uh, Swords Warriors managed to take the charge from the Chaos Chosen Knights and hold, which is fantastic because we now got a flank charge against them. And with all that rank bonus, we should push them out of the way. And just a quick note on the top side there, the Hang Gunners actually managed to wipe them all but one skeleton out. Um, which was just brilliant because that means uh, in the next round we should be able to defeat them and uh, that's another unit wiped out and they can then concentrate on shooting on those zombies now I know I've skipped here to our, our <laughs> magic phase but as you might have noticed there's actually more skeletons now than there was and that's in our turn so as you can see the halberdiers there have charged the zombies and here we were about to break through the, um, <laughs> the skeletons but the, we wanted to cast the Conflagration of Doom, from, uh, sorry, Wall of Fire, onto those zombies that you can see behind there. With this wizard, who then um, miscast, allowing the enemy to cast a spell from their own law. And of course, did raise dead on these bloody skeletons. So this means that we ain't going to kill them this round, which means in the next round they'll have the chance to raise more. <laughs> and these handgunners are dead. Can't believe it. We actually raise skeletons in our own turn. Anyway, on the upside, we managed to get the flank charge in here against the Chosen. And, uh, yeah, that's them done for, pretty much. Uh, with the amount of ranks, outnumber, flank attack, banner, I, we're well sorted there to chase those guys off. Uh, as you see, we've also charged the Halberdiers in against the Zombies. And uh, they should be able to do pretty well against them. Um... I've actually managed to charge one of the necromancers with my uh, Sally as well. So if we can eat one of those, that will give us a bit of a magic advantage. And also, if you notice, on the Ziggurat, there is no Banshee of uh, a fireball we cast prior to raising a dead against us. <laughs> um, actually killed it off, which was great. So, uh, <laughs> in the combat phase, you must have noticed that I missed the shooting phase. That's because our shooting phase does very little. I think we might kill a Chaos Warrior. Our cannon crew, I think, missed, misfired, and then fled. <laughs> so, the cannon didn't do either very well. And as you can see here, the handgunners are running to the lives from that newly raised <laughs> undead army. Uh, undead army, undead unit. I uh, couldn't believe it. Raised skeletons on our own turn. It's just not fair. And I would just like to use the phrase salt to wounds as, yeah, as you can see, we did nothing wounds wise to them. They did a couple to us. We won the combat. <laughs> they passed the courage of uh, their uh, leadership check and stayed. God, can you believe it? Ah, uh, no, no, because now we're absolutely screwed because the... Um, Chaos up there will charge into the flank of our Soros, we'll lose all our bonuses, they'll get all the bonuses and absolutely mince us. So this flank has absolutely gone, to be honest. Um, as soon as the Hell Blaster went and our inability to actually do any damage on these guys meant they have pretty much a free run through this flank. So did we have any good news? Well, yeah, my Sally actually ate the Necromancer and ran through and came over and into this combat. And here, the, the guys did alright. They had hatred for the first round, used their halberds, and absolutely minced the um, zombies um, with the combat res as well. Yeah, got rid of a few. So hopefully next turn, opponent's turn, as long as we don't let them raise anything, um, we should be okay. So we're back to the opponent's phase, and yes, as you can imagine, they charge straight into the flank of our um, swordsmen, <laughs> also joined by their hero as well, so deep trouble on this flank so this is how things are looking and I'm pretty you know we're hammered down here against the chaos but on the other side there's a vain hope um, that we can defeat the uh, zombies and as you can see there he's actually hidden his necromancy uh, leader uh, behind the wolves which is excellent because if we can wipe out these zombies I can overrun and um, with my Sally charge into those wolves there's no way they could hold uh, overrun and into that necromancer and finish off their general which would be great uh, just to say that they actually used a bound spell item to use try and invocate um, not invocation the heck the other one dance macabre the, um, the grave guard into the back of um, the swordsman 
and it's a bound level three and i was so unsure that with our three remaining dice would be able to stop it because i just knew i'd roll either a double one or roll two dice and just roll double one i actually just used a dispel scroll and it's the first time i've ever used a dispel scroll to stop a bound level three spell from really messing up our plans that's how that's how i thought our luck was going that i required a dispel scroll instead of rolling for it here's a close-up of this combat and this one so as you can see here, yeah, all those units broke and fled and were run down. Um, the handgunners also broke because uh, the unit uh, broke from combat. Um, but on the, on the top side, uh, a bit of better news. As you can see, uh, we've actually beaten the um, zombies. So now our swordsmen are free to do as they wish. And so is my salamander to free to charge those handgunners. Uh, handgunners. Free to charge those wolves. So everything in our turn just moved up to try and get some more shots on these guys, just to try and do some casualties. The handgun is rallied, which is awesome. As you can see, my Lisbon hero completely wasted this game. It's now in the woods, ready to charge what he was hoping to get into the fight over here, but it's already cleared up. Um, the halberdiers marched forward. Uh, well, I uh, couldn't march because they're into the other guys, but turned 90 degrees and started heading towards those zombies. And my Sally, as I said, went straight into that... Um, uh, what do you call them? Wolves, dogs, chaos dogs, chaos hounds. So, yeah, ran straight into these guys. I'm so chuffed about this. Uh, Sally causes fear, so fear check on leadership five dogs. Uh, they pass, uh, believe it or not. Uh, so much for a quick overrun. I thought the fear would do it, but never mind. I have still got my two strength five attacks. Should be able to chomp down on these guys. I killed one. Combat's a draw. So much for my glorious charge into the Necromancer General. So, uh, back, <laughs> back to the enemy's turn. And uh, the zombies uh, zombies charge in here against these chaps. Um, yeah, i just like to point out that Leadership 5. If you wonder why I haven't talked about the skinks that are on the top left-hand side next to the Watchtower, why they haven't come in and shot up loads of stuff. Um, that's because they fled when the Croc scores fled. Then they rallied and fled when the... Um, cannon fled and then they all fled and <laughs> that was it but i'd like to remind you i'm leadership 5 2 with cold blooded and i couldn't pass the ready test uh the other champion was charging over here and the sheer terror of him charging meant that they didn't hit him once over here the banner of zappiness from the chaos knights had um zapped my skinks caused several casualties and they then fled again leadership 5 cold blooded just saying and over here, uh, I beat in the combat phase, I actually managed to beat these guys. Yeah, I killed one more and uh, beat them off. Uh, which means this means that Sally's now free to charge the enemy wizard general, which is fantastic. Um, by the way, he does have four crew, three or four crew um, with him. I just have the one spare skink at the moment. Uh, as I was going to add casualties, um, I was going to add them on, but my skinks have been too busy fleeing around and uh, not actually fighting. Um, I have got casualties now, but I'm so disheartened with my skinks. <laughs> I thought I won't bother adding them in and curse my poor Sally. Over here, um, the Halberdiers do extremely well. Um, many thanks to the hatred that the Warrior Priest invokes. And does a good job of pushing some of these guys up. So this is into the uh, the opponent's turn now. As you can see, yeah, his hero blasted through the um, handgunners. <laughs> the Empire Halberdiers actually managed to defeat the first round of zombies and in this turn they then got charged in the flank by the enemy zombies and a vampire thrall into the rear. As you can see my Sally in my turn actually managed to go off, went off and kill the Necromancer General. That's why there's very few other zombies on the board including those that are coming on after chasing off the hand gunners. They're all gone. So, But the high leadership of the Grave Guard means they're going to be hanging around and with the vampire there as well. He'll be hanging around just as well too. So, yep, they failed their fear test. <laughs> ah, so, hitting on sixes. Uh, so, they failed to kill the four zombies on the flank. And the throw minced up quite a few guys with a flank charge, rear charge. Uh, even with all the ranks and stuff. They only they failed by a few, broke, and were then run down. Uh, yeah, pretty sure they were run down. 
So, uh, yeah, the, the four zombies that charged and the Thrall defeated the Halberdiers because they failed their leadership test, of course, and needed six to hit them. Failed to do any casualties. They lost a few guys, fled. Um, thankfully, they weren't caught. Um, and then, then in our turn, they managed to rally, which was something. And my source hero finally got into a scrap and killed the Thrall. <laughs> that was it. And that was the end of the game. It was a brutal game. It was absolutely great fun, I have to say. We enjoyed doing it. Considering we had a 45 position and an extra 200 points. Oh, we did really badly. Um, and some of it was down to some really dodgy luck. But, you know, that's what the dice game's all about. And it does make it more fun. Uh, the Hell Blaster lost in the first turn. Uh, just to get three wounds through and then kill all three crew. Because oh, that Hell Blaster would have been just really nice against those Chaos Knights. Um... Then, <laughs> then actually raising the dead in our own turn, causing one of our units to get destroyed. Yeah, that was a bit fun as well. Um, what else happened? Oh, you know, I can't remember now. Just the cow. Oh, the the dogs holding their ground against my charging Sally, causing fear, and then passing the fear to ah. Oh. You know, it was just one of those games, but it was really good fun. The, the undead army is now crumbling, got no general, just got a unit left. The Chaos army is pretty much untouched. I think we've killed, might have killed one, maybe two of those Chaos knights and a handful of other Chaos warriors. Just chipping away from those archers there, just been trying to keep them from marching, as my wizard has. Um, yeah, things we did wrong. Um... I don't know, the other, the other thing was our uh, shooting, it never did anything. Uh, we brought handguns with armour piercing for a reason, and they did no, even against the Chaos Warriors, which was slightly annoying, and a cannon which just fled. Um, but there's not a lot we could do. Um, as I say, the thing that uh, I wasted my time on was moving my hero. If he stayed in his unit, he could probably have had a go with the Strength 6, because of the Sword of Might. Uh, have a go at hacking through some of those Chaos Warriors, uh, Chaos Knights. Uh, would have been much better. Uh, he did nothing all game and just came over here and realised it was too late to do anything. So that probably lost us that flank, to be honest. That was pretty much a major boo-boo by me. Um, other than that, I think it was just um, some bad luck. Uh, oh yeah, the spirit host, one wound remaining because we couldn't get any spells to make give them magical attacks and stuff. But all in all, it was a really fun game. Um, well done to the opponents. Uh, that's the last time I'm letting Brian ride goblins because they did too well. So he has to get his own undead now. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, I'm hopefully going to do a few more of these where we just do some combined games and then uh, finish off with another game. It's just a fun way of playing it. It's not the so much the setup and play against one another. We've got a couple of those, but um, it's nice to break it up and have a few scenarios and um, give some bonuses to another one. We'd like to do a proper siege soon as well. Um, I am looking at doing some extra terrain for my... Um, Oh, what'd you go up? They my lizardman, and I'm debating on whether to try and make a lizardman fortress, but we'll see how that goes. All right, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, you take care of yourselves. That one is.